All right, class, everybody sit down. I'm your substitute for today, Mrs. Botker. Mrs. Heller will not be here with us, so we'll be watching a video. Okay, does that take you back to your school days? The bell and everything? How many times did you have a substitute teacher and they came in with the TV and everybody was excited because you knew you were watching a movie? Well, you've got the substitute teacher, but no movie today. We're live. Miss Pam and our producer Joe are out in Long Beach, California at the Long Beach Quilt Show. Be sure to say hi if you see them there at the show. We'll be having a special event highlighting all of the great footage that they're gonna capture while they're at the show with highlights from the show, interviews with some great people. Be sure you register for your chance to win some fun prizes. All right, I'm gonna grab my phone. We're gonna get this out of here because heck, I am not gonna watch a movie, I'm gonna teach live. Here we go, Miss Emily. There we go. I'll let you pull it the rest of the way so that I get out of Greg's way because we're all the substitute teachers today. Okay, let's take a look at where everybody's from. Oh, Texas, hello Texas, I bet it's hot down there. Fredericksburg, Virginia, okay Marla, is it hot there? I think it's hot everywhere. I saw Colorado, Colorado doesn't have the humidity, do they? Yeah, yeah, that would make a big difference. That would make a difference. All right, well, no movie, let's just get started. So I loved the projects. My gosh, how fabulous were those? Weren't they great, Emily? Very, very fun, yeah. You guys I didn't have introduce Emily. <laughs> Emily's here, Emily is not a substitute. Emily is the regular TA here in this class. She's here all day I to sure make sure am. the rest of us stay on track. Happy to be here. Yes. <laughs> So let's take a look at some of those great customer projects because they were fabulous. Okay, so the first one up is from Becky J. I love this. So cool. So she's used her, her piecing to really highlight, I can't tell for sure if it's applique, embroidery, or fussy cut fabric. What do you think, Emily? I don't know, I can't tell. Honestly, it is so cool though. It almost gives it like a pixelated kind it does. of does. It does. It, it's I, really cute, love and the I love, bold. Like, yeah, the different colors of the birds mm -hmm. too, how mm -hmm. she did that, it's so clever, Becky. Really fun. All right, next up we've got Dorothy M, and we've got some adorable flamingo placemats. Okay, everybody needs flamingo placemats in their lives. They I sure I, do. <laughs> just look at those, those are so cute. And I think she's got flamingo glasses with them too. That's adorable. That is so cute. Isn't Good job, Dorothy. Great job of background. Last up, let's see, we've got Leah G who made this wonderful flower basket table runner. Isn't this cute? Now that flower basket, that is one of our basic 72 blocks. Mm -hmm. You can make that with any mix and match cube. And she's just taken three blocks, set them on point and made a darling table runner. Yes, and those Love contrasting that. setting triangles are everything. Those setting triangles make all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, today's show is all about our newly released Go Mill and Star die. Now, it is the August die to try and only available for the month of August or while supplies last. So you want to get yours right away. Remember, last month we sold out of the Go Lucky Star, so I think we'll sell out of this one too. All right. We have a question, we have a picture of the day. Picture first, yes. picture of the day. Here's our picture of the day. And you're all thinking, what? Well, here's the question of the day. The Go Mill and Stars die is the newest member of our Bob dies. What other quilt block that we don't already have would you like us to make into a die? So this is your chance to shout out to our product team and to us to tell us what you would like to see us make into a Bob die. What do you think about that? I can't wait to see what people come up with. I know, with. I think we're gonna have some great ideas. I know the product team is dying to see what you had to say because we really do pay attention to what you ask for. So keep putting those in the comments. We wanna see all of those. We'll talk about them coming up. Yes, please. All right, with our new die comes some exciting bundles so you can get this great die and start on your new projects. The first one is the Go Mill and Stars eight inch finished die with a six by 12 cutting mat. Now the only other things you need to get started are your Go Fabric Cutter and your scrap stash because this is a fantastic scrap busting die. The second bundle we've got for you is the Go Block On Board Favorites eight inch die bundle. 
This one includes the Go Millen Stars, 8 inch finished, the Go Hattie's Choice, also 8 inch finished, a 6 by 12 cutting mat, the Go Weather Vane, which is 8 inch finished, and the Go Maple Leaf, which is 8 inch finished, plus a 6 by 24 cutting mat for those. Now this bundle is perfect for mixing the Go Millen Stars die with other eight inch finish blocks, including one of my all time favorites, Miss Emily. We talked about it earlier, the Go Hattie's Choice. <laughs> yeah, it's a terrific die. Plus, but wait, as they say, there's more. You're gonna get double reward points on your purchases today. So that is pretty cool. Yeah, that's a perfect time to shop. That's right, so today we are going to give away one of our Go Millen Stars die. So you wanna be sure you always register for all of our future events on our AccuQuilt event page. That's how you win. By registering, you get event emails, that way you won't forget and miss an event or tutorial. And that's how you're registered to win prizes. So Miss Emily will be announcing the winner of our giveaway today at the end of our show. Great. I love the one behind you. <gasps> and that's actually the quilt that we're gonna work on yeah, and making a block for And we've today. actually, Miss Robin has already asked, what is the background for the name of the new die, the Millen Star? Well, and we looked into that. So mm -hmm. Emily's got a story for you about it. Yeah, so, and I can kind of point it out on this quilt because it's a little bit easier to see here once you've sewn a four patch. Um, so when you sew your four Millen Stars together, you'll actually see in the middle here, it creates that wheel of the mm -hmm. mill. And so we have the mill and the stars. So it's surrounding the mill itself. And it's really cool if you were to do this, um, you know, with two colorways, it would kind of make this, you know, a literal wheel That's going right. around, which is a very, very cool design. That's right. Um, but I can't wait to see how you make this project today. It's well, so cute. Now for anybody who watched yesterday's show, Vicki's project, which one was the most popular one yesterday, had that wheel in the center made with alternating colors. She had put her block together so that it was red and white alternating and you could see that much more boldly yeah. represented that way. Very clearly the mill. That yeah. is fascinating. I love the history behind quilt blocks. Well, the one that we're talking about is the Go Twinkling Star Wall Hanging and it is a free pattern at AccuQuilt.com. So you'll wanna be sure and download this pattern before your die arrives so you're all ready to put it together. So let's get our die here. We'll take a look. This is such a fun die and it's so easy to put together. Wait till I show you. So it's a block on board die. So you know we're gonna have some things for you. We're gonna have the two tone foam so you can tell exactly where your shapes are. It's on a six by 12 die board. That means it's gonna fit in all of our cutters including the Go Me. Then we've got the two shapes that are involved and we've still screen printed those letters on them, A and B, so that you can keep track of your pieces. So A is the star center. So this one that looks kind of like a, um, a chubby kite shape. It kind of does. Chubby, chubby's a cuter word than fat. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then we've got the side pieces here and we'll show you some great tips for that. Now, this does finish to an eight inch finish block. So, you know, it's gonna be a natural to pair up with some great other dies like the eight inch mix and match cube, the eight inch companions, and of course those eight inch setting triangles. All right, so we are gonna lay out some fabric here. I've got some pink and purple because why wouldn't you use pink and purple, right, Em? Well, exactly. I mean, if this is an Erica show, then we have then to purple. Then purple has purple. to be involved. <laughs> There's more to come, too. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and put our background fabric on here. Now, your background fabric on these shapes is fan folded. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to make sure I get my shapes. All right. And then as soon as I get this through our cutter, because I'm going to use the Go Big, Emily's going to give us some ideas. Do we have some ideas for dies yet? We do. And actually, I already have a question. And this is a, kind of a perfect time since we were just looking at the die. How is this different from the kite die in the companion set of cubes? It is a different shape. It is a, a chubbier shape, as I said. It's got a shorter tail to it. And the dog ears on it are specially designed to work with those side pieces. Those side pieces are unique to this die, 
So you cannot get this actual same identical block using your cube and companions. Sure. Great question. And we do have some fabulous ideas. Um, Miss Noreen uh, requested a Bethlehem star. Oh, great idea. Kenna um, su suggested a Florida star. I don't think I've seen a Florida I don't star know myself. What a Florida star looks like. You'll have to post a picture for us. I know. Let's see that. I'd yeah. love to take a look. Um, oh my gosh. And then Mary says, suggest some golf themed. Golf themed? That would be popular in my family. That would be very fun. Okay. Well, let's take a look. This is such a great block. And you know, it looks kind of complicated and it really isn't. And oh my goodness, I did not cut this. I was talking. I didn't lay this quite flat on my die. It didn't cut out. Well, we're gonna make some other background pieces. Do I need to go grab you some fabric? No, I've got some right here. Okay, perfect. I am, after all, the substitute teacher. <laughs> That's true, always prepared. Always prepared. <laughs> Love that. All right, we'll make sure that I actually cover my shapes this time. So we're gonna have white and gray. Mm -hmm. Instead of just white, oh, wait, I already cut these. All right. And we also have a nice another question from Miss Janine. How much fabric waste is there using dyes as opposed to cutting yourself? You know, very little, I find. So it, of course, is going to depend on your fabrics, whether you're using scraps, the shapes that you're using. But I really find very, very little. Yeah, I found the same. Because stop and think about it. When you do the other, other methods, a lot of times, A, you, you, I don't know about you, but my ruler slips. And you have to go back, and then you have to keep squaring up your fabric. Yeah. So there's the opportunity for mistakes. But there's also the opportunity, um, there are certain techniques that you do with some non-die cut shapes to get your shapes, if that makes sense, <laughs> that you don't have to do. So. What I mean by that, and I don't have a square here, but a lot of times, you know how your, your patterns will read for, for non-die cut projects. It'll have you cut a square and take two squares together and draw a line from corner to corner, and then um, maybe sew on either side of it, sure. or maybe just sew on one side of it. Right. So you sew on one side of it, and then you trim off the extra, mm. and then you've just wasted that fabric. Wow. And plus you have to then press it open and trim the dog ears off. Yeah. Well, what I with the die, you can just cut the half square triangle, just cut the quarter square triangle that you need and you don't have to keep trimming off those extras. So things like snowballed corners and all. Um, I had a blog post I wrote a couple of weeks ago about translating patterns into dies and that'll help you too. Yeah, that was a great blog. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm laying out my pieces while Emily's looking for your dye ideas. Yes. And I want to, t I talked about the dog ears, so I want to show you the dog ears. There are two different dog ears on these side pieces. There's one that's just angled across the corner straight, and there's this one that gives the appearance of a curve. It's up and down. The curved looking piece goes to the top of your triangle here, okay? Mm -hmm. When you lay it out to sew it, see how that fits perfectly? Oh, wow. And it goes around the corner and then it matches up with this corner. If you did it the other way around, it would not match up correctly. Can you see that? Yeah, that's, that just shows you why it's such a best practice. So this is why block. it is A, an absolutely necessary best practice to make a test block, but B, to pay, the, pay attention to your directions. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this out. And we're making mirror images. Now this die will cut up to a four color block in one pass through the cutter. I was going for a three color block, but I ended up making a four color block, didn't I? 
Okay. It's gonna be cute. It's still gonna be really super cute. That's why I really like this. Well, and what's cool Hi. is like, you know, since you are doing the two color block, if you were to, you know, do four together, you could, you would right. get that, that mill effect in the right. middle of them as well. So what we're gonna be doing is building quarter units here when we start sewing these together. So we've got them all laid out and I'm using solids. You could use your color way up. We've got a lot of, a lot of ideas coming up next. So that's coming up soon. Cool. Now be sure you enjoy, join me and Miss Pam back together again on Tuesday, August 9th at 12 noon central time. We have the ultimate Bob Apalooza. It's a showcase of some of our favorite Bob dies. Be sure you register for the event on the event page for your chance to win prizes. Okay, now this is a great chain piecing block and we're gonna start by sewing all of one side to that center star point and then we'll go around, we'll do some pressing. Oh yes, some pressing. And then we'll go around the other direction. So I'm gonna lay this out, turn my iron on, and Emily, I bet we've got some more ideas, don't we? We, we surely do. Um, Jackie is requesting a Joseph's coat. Excellent. This would be very, very cool. Barb, oh, this, my mom would love this. Pansies, AKA Johnny Jump Ups. Oh, pansies are one of my favorite. I'm a May baby, so I love pansies. Oh yeah, my mom is, that's like her favorite flower in the whole wide world. She, she always says, you know, you know it's springtime when the pansies come out. That's right. <laughs> And then Miss Pat would request, um, ooh, mermaid and mason jar applique. Okay. I could totally see a, oh my gosh, a mermaid. That would be fun. A mermaid would be very popular in my family as well. Really? Yes. Lots of mermaid fans. My Dana would like the mermaid. <laughs> my girls were swimmers, so. Oh, perfect. I'll say, so they're little mermaids. Yeah. Love that. Um, let's see, Karen says she'd like to see the New York Beauty 9 or 10 inch. Ooh, oh, have to look that one up. Wow, even the size suggestion. I'm interested with She's the, put some thought into this. I mean, seriously though, she really did. And I'm interested, like we've got a Florida, we've got a New York, like. You no, know, I think that all the states have blocks. Um, that's a really fun idea. Are they really? Well, there's the Arkansas Traveler. Yeah. And there's, I know there's some others. So um, there, a lot of them are stars, but I don't think they're all stars. Okay. And we also have, oh yeah, Tammy, kind of on that same vein. Um, how about start, start making a die of the shape of each state? Oh. So you could do, you know, you could do your Nebraska outline. That I mean, would be fun. I can think of, of a football. lot of ideas for that. There could be so many cool ideas for that. All right. Um, I think Vicki created a project a few weeks ago for us using, was it Minnesota state outline with the deer head? Oh yeah, she did. It was so cool. It was really cute. Yeah. It was really cute. That was our dye to try. Yeah. All right. Now, remember we talked about our, our our little piecing there. So now I'm gonna be pressing. And, okay, I can't remember. Brock, you're gonna have to move me so I can see whether I'm pressing, which way I'm pressing. Ooh, I don't remember. I think, was it to the purple? This one I pressed towards the background. Okay, we can back up now, I'm good. There we go. All right, so we just had that great question about scraps and waste. And it kind of leads me into another really popular question that we get about um, scraps and using up your stash. Oh my God. And how you, can, how you can use the dies to make it easier to use up your stash. Have you got, have you got a stash going? I sure do, yes. I've, I'm slowly but surely accumulating a stash and it, it just, it adds up so quickly. And it yeah, really does. I need to bust that buddy up. You know, there are some great ways to do that. And quite frankly, I think this die is one of them. Yeah. And I've got a totally scrappy version I'm going to show you later. But think about doing, just picking a constant, like maybe it's the gray or maybe it's the white, and cutting all of your fabric left over from a project into the star points. Oh, that'd be so pretty. And then you've just got them all to put together. Yeah. Or maybe if you make, like, you make a lap quilt for your couch, 
Maybe you take the scraps and do that, and then you make pillow covers to go to match your quilt. Cute. Oh, um, so much fun. Some other great ideas are to use your cubes. Maybe it's just half score triangles even. That's very true. You know, so they're all gonna go together. Um, Lynn went through and did hers with the Morning Star die. And she has, is working on this huge Morning Star quilt that has scraps from every quilt she's ever made in it. Wow. Pretty awesome. Um, Pam uses the Log Cabin die to cut up her scraps. Um, whatever it is, then you just put those aside and then you can use those if you're a quilter who likes leaders and enders. Um, that's a practice where you're going to sew something through at the end that you leave on the machine to help you get started the next time you come back. That's just going to help you get going for the next time around. Mm -hmm. So pretty soon you're going to have another project. So cool. You're going to bust it all up. Another great idea is to cut it into really common uh, pre-cut sizes. So, so many patterns today are cut for jelly rolls, right? Or two and a half inch strips. I'm sure. There's a die for that. Uh, charm squares, two and a half, uh, five inch squares. Lots of pattern written for those. We've got a die for that. How about 10 inch squares or layer cakes? See, there's a die for that too. So, common pre-cut sizes, that's another great way to bust up your stash. And it's so easy with the dies. These are fabulous ideas. And I bet everybody's got like their own special best idea. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Well, and I, I mean, I just used my five inch cube to bust up a bunch of scraps this past week. I mean. Four and five inch cubes are great for that because they're small. Mm -hmm. I hate wasting. Another great use is the English paper piecing cube because those are really small pieces. Yes. Ooh, good old English. So many ideas. Piecing. I know, there really so are. quilty ideas. <laughs> All right, don't forget, we've got special bundles available for today's Die to Try launch party. So you can place your bundle orders today. Don't forget, you're going to get double reward points too. And, and we're going to give away one of our Go Millen Star dies. So be sure to register for all of our future events on the AccuQuilt event page. That's how you get your chance to win. Okay, so now we want to go back and sew these together. We've got one side sewed on. I was just sewing away, I wasn't even talking. Sewed one side on to all of them and pressed it towards the background. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew the other side on and press that towards the star point. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. And All right, goes. what other ideas have we got while I sew, Miss Emily? Yes, and actually, and I do have a couple of questions for you too. Oh, goody. I've, we've been um, asked from Missy Miss Diane. Um, wants to know, uh, so yesterday Pam mentioned if you have an eight inch finished half, that you have an eight inch finished half square triangle. If she has the eight inch setting triangles, can she use that, um, that bob, that die for the half square triangles instead? No. Right, because of the bias? I don't think it's the same size. Oh, okay. And it's also, you can, um, you might, if it was the same size, you could by reorienting how you lay the fabric on the die when you cut it. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that, but I don't, I'm not convinced it's the same size. Right. Well, and they're also, I know that they're put on the, the they're, they're cut on, on the, the diagonal. So normally a half square triangle is cut so that the diagonal or which is on, which is the stretchy part is going to go on the inside of your block. Our setting triangle dies are set up and designed with so that you lay the fabric lengthwise on the die. That's going to put the lengthwise or the tight grain to the outside of your quilt. It's confusing. Mm -hmm. well, so I was trying to get my foot pedal here. <laughs> OK, so but we could probably grab one and take a look. Yeah. I'm gonna look at an eight, and I've got an eight and a half inch square cut over here already. And uh, speaking of, um, you know, positioning on the die board, would you position um, the fabric in line with the die cut or even with the die board? You always wanna lay it with, it with the die blades. So your lengthwise grain is gonna go parallel to the lengthwise blades as it goes through the cutter. 
that, think long and lean, okay? Remember long and lean, because that's what we all want to be, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that means that that lengthwise grain or the tight grain is going to be running the long way on the die, and it's going to go parallel to that shape. And the question's always why, and it has to do with the crosswise blades. So on a die like this, you can see these are set at a little bit of an angle. You want to follow that. Now here we don't, we have barely any crosswise blade mm -hmm. right here. So with this shape, it's, and everything's on the bias. So with this shape, it's not quite as important. But when, if we had it so that this was straight across, we would potentially not get as clean a cut or we could have some fabric stretch if we didn't have our fabric at this angle. Think about driving over a speed bump, quilters. Sure. You drive over a speed bump, what do you do? You lurch. And we just want to keep that from happening. So that's why we put those at a slight angle. There you go. Perfect. All right, do we have questions or suggestions? We do. Um, so Pat is curious. Um, Oh, let's see. Yeah, was wondering if we have any suggestions. You know, maybe I should save this question because Miss Pam is the Halloween queen. But she's wondering if, if we have a suggestion of a pattern to create a Halloween themed um, quilt. But honestly, the Mill and Stars could be really cool Anything, for Halloween. almost anything can become a Halloween themed quilt. It's all about the fabric. Um, fabric and color. It kind of like the millinery really, gives me like witchy. I mean, you could vibes. make this into a fabulous Halloween quilt. As a matter of fact, yesterday, um, one of our experts, Vicki, had some blocks she was playing with in her first segment with orange and green and purple and black. Very Halloween-y looking. So it's all a matter of color and placement. This could totally be a Halloween quilt. Um, of course, our spider web dye is a natural. We've got fun Halloween applique shapes as well. I made a Halloween fabric log cabin. So you can pretty much make anything that way. So go to Go Quilt on our website, pull up a pattern, and then start playing with Halloween fabric collections or colors that are in the program with, that, with any pattern and see what it looks like. That's your best bet. It's a fabulous idea. Great question. It really is. And then, um, let's see, Sandra is curious, um, are the jelly roll strips cut width of fabric? Should you cut width of fabric or straight of grain? They are width of fabric. And here's the thing why I said crosswise blades. There are no crosswise blades on our strip dies. And that's because we want you to be able to use those as great multitaskers. So without any Crosswise blades, you can lay your fabric any which way you want to on a strip die. So that means they're designed to cut with the fabric strips because that's, let's face it, that's how we usually quilt, right? We cut with the fabric strips for our bindings and to subcut into pieces. But you can also do lengthwise and run yardage up and down. If you want lengthwise cuts, you can run it up and down your, your die as long as your folds on the ends are inside the end of the blade ends, but you can also cut bias binding on our dies. So there's videos on all those things out there. Great question. Fabulous. And then we do have so many fun suggestions, but I know I, I want you to get to Okay, okay. <laughs> Next step, it. and then we'll do questions. So. I went ahead and pressed towards the star points on the other side, and that means that when I put these together, these are gonna nest for me. And I'm gonna sew my sides together. Well, they are if I lay them out correctly. There we go. So they're gonna lay out. There we go. There we go. And basically, it's four units, like a four patch, except my four patch is made with quarter square triangles, basically. Okay. So I'm gonna sew my two sides together while we do our next little question here. Yes. We have some really cool suggestions as well. Um, oh, good. Jennifer wishes that we had a Bob for Lone Star. 
Well, a lone star is very similar to our prairie star. Is it? Okay. Well, maybe, maybe that's something to check out, Jennifer. So you might want to take a look at that and see if that'll work for your needs. Yeah. Could be very fun. And then let's see. Ooh, Kate says she'd love, it's not a, not a die, but she'd love to see 5 by 10 storage blocks for her 5 by 10 oh. boards. I use my five, I put my five and tens in the box that also holds the six by twelves. That, uh, yeah. So I multitask those. I use the same size box for both of those dies myself. Exactly. Um, that way you're, you're not limited. Yeah. Who wants to be limited? We're girls, we need options. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I, okay, I've never heard of a, a qua, quatrefoil die. Quatrefoil? Yeah. Okay. Q A T R E F O I L. I've never heard of that before, but that's really cool. I'm going to look that up, Jessica. Um, okay. Miss Charlotte requests a God's Eye quilt block. Oh, okay. That's a really good. That would be cool. Really, really fun. Okay. My now, goodness. I've got my two. I don't want to burn myself. I've, I've done that. Been there, done that. Yeah, that little iron is screaming hot. Okay, so you can see we have our two half square triangles basically that we've built now. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and sew these together. Now I'm gonna press, I press towards my purple, or I'm pressing towards my purple, because again, I like nesting my seams. Right. Because that gives me that great center point and I love a good center point and let's face it do we not always take a look at somebody else's points when we look at their quilt it is so true we shouldn't <laughs> we shouldn't but we do <laughs> and then we say "Ooh, look at those points and that's what you want quilters to say right exactly it's the same as you making bias binding you want other quilters to go "Ooh, bias binding right okay so you can see here, we're gonna, I've nest, I can nest these seams, they're gonna lay perfectly. I can nest these seams so they lay perfectly. And I'm gonna just have the most perfect block. And one could, if one was me, <laughs> and you've got grab your, your handy dandy pin cushion. And by the way, everybody needs our go pin cushion die. That is such a fun project die. And you can take so many little applique shapes and make them different for season. Oh, yes. And yeah, you could have one for. And if you're making them for, they make great presents for other quilters. If you are in a quilt guild and you do, you know, gifts exchanges or little secret Santa things, they're great for that. It is so true. Let's see, ooh, Erica, I have kind of a fun question from Edith. She's wondering if you can cut, you know, the kite shape, shape A. Yes. Do you think you could cut that out with a charm square? Um, I think actually you could, but we can put a ruler on top of it and yeah. take a look. Um, and then let's... Because that would be a really cool way to use up charm packs if you happen to have any sitting around. Exactly, exactly. Juanita's wondering the same thing. So yeah, maybe after we take some... All right, some well, and... I'm guessing we've got a ruler yeah, sitting no. around here somewhere. Let's see. We can... Yeah, these are great questions. Hey, everybody's on their A game for the substitute teacher today. I, I love it. Seriously, everybody's got good suggestions. I'm so glad I didn't just give you a video to watch. <laughs> Speaking of videos, don't forget, our videos all live on YouTube and on our Facebook page. So you can go back and watch videos anytime that you like. If you're missing Miss Pam, you can go ahead and watch her before next week when she's back. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, just looking here at some more of these really fun suggestions, Erica. These are just so cute. All right, I'm pressing. I've pressed. There we go. Pressing, she's pressing. Oh, look at how beautiful look. that turned look out. Look how pretty. Oh. Isn't that fun? You know, I, almost, I almost prefer it with the gray as opposed to the all white. You know, white. there's just so many looks. And I've got a lot of examples because I went a little crazy. I really, really like this dye. So <laughs> they're coming up. Now, before I forget, 
reminder, I know I mentioned the blog before, but we do have a blog and there's a lot of cool stuff that lives there. And even if they're not written by me, it's a great place to find inspiration, tutorials, patterns, sewing tips, and more ways to use and love your AccuQuilt fabric cutter and dies. Meet our go-getters, get to know the team behind the brand, and join in on all the conversations. So we have got this all sewn together. I kind of jumped ahead, but we're all put together. And we've got, again, if we're making the one behind Emily, you're probably going to do just the white in the background. And you're going to need a total of 16 blocks like this to make that wall hanging. And you can see how fast that went. You're going to have it done in no time. If you want to make it bigger, because sometimes that happens, doesn't it? I don't know. You're newer to quilting. Sometimes it happens that you make a block and you think, oh, that's really fun and I really like how that looks. So now I don't just want to make this like a baby quilt for my neighbor. I want a lap quilt for my couch or I want a quilt for my bed. Well, then just add more stars, add more squares, or go ahead and sub in another bob, like the Go Weather Rain that we've got in our bundle, and that way you can make a bigger project. That'd be so perfect. It happened to me recently. Really? Yeah, I was gonna make pillows, pillow covers, with um, the, the pattern Wooly Stars by Corey Yoder, and it's a sheep oh, cute. with an Ohio star on it. Oh, there's another state. Ohio Star. That's right. And I decided I liked it so much I wanted to make a lap quilt for my couch instead. So I made the small quilt version. And now I'm going back and now I have to make more sheep because now I still want my pillow covers. My goodness. It happens. <laughs> we just have to keep going. Now, the project, back to the pro the substitute teacher wandered. Back to the project at hand, this one and the one behind that's behind Emily is also gonna use a couple strip dies. It's gonna use the four and a half and three inch strip dies. So if you don't have those, they are great ones to go ahead and add to your collection today. You're gonna get double reward points after all. So go ahead, follow the pattern, complete the quilt, and be sure you share your finished project with us on all our social media. Emily's gonna find it there, and that way we can put it in our montage and we can all take a look and be inspired by you. All right, so we also have a quilt using this same die behind me, but with a very different look, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn off my iron while I'm thinking about it, because I'm gonna start flailing my arms around and get in trouble. <laughs> So let's take a look at the one we've got behind our wall. And I'm just gonna walk back here, hopefully. I think Greg expected that. So here's our block. We've got just two colors. So just the black and the white alternating. Now here's the tricky part. This is the alternating block. And these are eight inch quarter square triangles. Mm. Now, this pattern was designed by Mary Ann Fontana of Fontana Originals. And Mary Ann did use the small triangle on our eight inch setting triangle die to do this. However, quilters, she changed the orientation of how the fabric is on the die when she cuts it so that the lengthwise grain is on the outside of this unit, not on the inside of the unit. Okay. Okay, so that means you have to do what, Emily? read the directions yes. <laughs> and follow them. That'll keep you from getting into a wonky situation. But I love this and I love the, the balance of the two because the one behind you just makes me think of a vintage kind of quilts and, yeah. and reproduction fabrics from the 30s and 40s. You know, it's that bubblegum pink and the light blue and the mint green and totally. that totally takes me to that era. Such a modern look behind me. So let's talk about some other things that you can do with this die, because I think that making the basic block is kind of just the starting point with this one. So let's take a look at what we've done. Oh yeah, you got it. So I said, I mentioned the um, 30s reproduction fabric, so I grabbed some and made one. And that's with this. Again, this is just the white background like the one behind Emily is. Yesterday, if you were watching yesterday's show, I saved my salvages, because I'm a quilter like that, and I saved my salvages. Should I hold it up or put it down? Which way do you want it, Justin? 
Okay, so I save salvages. I save salvages for more than one reason. And I was, Emily and I were talking about salvages earlier. Yeah. Salvages have interesting and very vital information. They have the designer name. They usually have the name of the fabric line, the fabric manufacturer, and a number, which is the, the ID number for that fabric. So those are all really important things to have. But they also have little dots of the colors. All the colors that are inside the fabric are represented. So these dots can really help you pull uh, other fabrics together if you're working on a project. But they're also cute. So like these are little foxes because the fabric was fox farm. Isn't that cute? And sometimes they have this one from art gallery is like measuring tape. And sometimes they have little sayings on them. So they're fun. Right. So I just took some, I sewed them onto a plain piece of white fabric and I cut it out on our die and then sewed some solid pieces to the side of it. So that's, you know, we're quilters. We wanna make use of every bit of fabric we can, right? Yeah. Even if it's our salvages. So cool. This one we cut out yesterday with batiks. Isn't this a fun look? Oh, I love it. Charming. And it was it was purple. Oh, charming. We have to measure charm squares. We have to measure. Oh yes, we have to measure. So this one made me think, and I, I thought about this before. We've basically made half square triangles, right? Mm -hmm. So you could use a half square triangle to offset. Maybe you just want a half a unit. Think about some design possibilities with that. Oh, cool. Or even like make your corners a little bit. Right, you know? making your corners different. If you're just, just think about different options with it. Yeah. It just opens up those creative possibilities. That's gorgeous. So there's a great idea for that. I almost see it even like the exploding heart pattern that we talked about yes. with the stars kind of breaking apart as they go out. That would be so cute. So there's another thought. Okay. Then one of our great experts on yesterday's show, it was such an inspirational show. Because this basic part is a quarter square triangle, right? Mm -hmm. She made them into flying geese. Oh Your flying God. geese are always going to be half as tall as they are wide. This is eight and a half inches. This needs, or eight inches finished. This needs to be four inches finished. So I use the four inch finished half square triangles, which is the large half square triangle from the eight inch cube and made a flying geese unit. And it looked so cool that then I made another one because I wanted to think about the different look that you could get by putting it together. And that was one way you could put it together, but if you changed it around, you had a whole different look. Oh my gosh, they look like fish booping noses. Oh, <laughs> they do. They're little kissing fish. They are. Little kissing fish. Oh, cute. So that was a whole different look. Here was one of my test blocks that I made. Now she also took and sewed those quarter squares together with the long direction. Now, I was not a huge fan of this because it puts your bias on your outside edge. Look how stretchy that is. And just by my messing around with it, it's all wonky already. But it, you could do it. Here's a totally scrappy version too. I just literally went to neutrals and browns and oranges and pulled. Pretty. Oh, it's so cute. And so you could, like I said, just make all different colors. You could do scrappy background on it too. I could almost see you like putting a pumpkin in the middle of that last fall one or something see? like that, you know? Or set it off with a solid eight inch square yeah. and put your applique on there. You could do pumpkins, you could do fall leaves. Um, oh, and of course we've got the maple leaf dye that finishes at eight inches and happens to be in the bundle today. But what if you kind of reverse things? We're doing all this with light backgrounds. What if you reversed it and did like a blue or, or the black like we see behind us with just the white stars and then maybe even solid stars or half stars twinkling? That'd be so pretty. I think there's a lot of options. So, so many creative ideas. I really like this one though. Are, are we getting ready? Maybe it's because it's so hot out we want fall. Could be. It could be. <laughs> well, there are just 
a ton of creative ideas for you to use with this dye. I think every quilter needs this dye. So true. Join me back here again with Miss Pam on Tuesday, August 9th at 12 noon Central Time. We're going to have the ultimate Bob Palooza <laughs> to showcase some of our favorite Bob dyes. Those are block on board dyes just like this one. Register on the event page at AccuQuilt.com. That's how you get a chance to win door prizes. All right, now quilters, don't forget, we've got those special bundles available for you to get your hands on the new Go Die to Try series die, the Go Mill and Stars. The first bundle we have for you is the Go Mill and Stars eight inch finish die with the six by 12 cutting mat. All you need is your fabric or some scraps and your AccuQuilt fabric cutter. If you've got both of those, you're ready to go. The second bundle we have for you is the Go Block on Board Favorites eight inch die bundle. This bundle is perfect for adding other eight inch finish dies to your collection alongside August die to try. So that is really fun. Like we talked about adding the maple leaf in, right? Plus don't forget, you're gonna get those double reward points when you place your orders today. You can use those points towards your future AccuQuilt purchases. All right, now we're gonna announce our winner, but first I'm gonna move all of my stuff and things over here, as Pam would say. And we're gonna take a look at measuring this shape. Oh, yeah. So our charm squares are gonna be five by five. And you know what? They're gonna be absolutely perfect. You're gonna have some little waste over, um, a little scrap left along the side that you could use for another project or in a different way but five inches is um, is like exactly what you're gonna prep your fabric to. That's perfect. Does it work on the shape B as well by chance? Shape B is longer. Okay. Shape B for your background. So shape B, you're gonna wanna cut that strip at probably five, uh, six and three quarter inches. Okay. But it'd be perfect on shape A It is though. absolutely perfect for shape A. Awesome. Absolutely perfect, great idea. You can bust up those, some of those collected five inch squares. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Emily, shall we do it? I think we should. Okay. All right. Let's okay. announce the winner of of the Millen Stars. Die. Oh boy. All right. So today's lucky winner is, if I could get a drum roll, please. <laughs> Missy D of Niagara Falls, Ooh. New York. Oh, okay. congratulations. Hey, this is a great die. You're gonna have so much fun with it. All right, so be sure to join us for next week's AccuQuilt Live. Pam will be back here to help you get ready for back to school. She's got a great whimsical wall hanging that's made with your cubes. So, school is over. I guess we're done for the day. I hope you all survived having the substitute teacher here in class with you today. Love using this dye. I hope you'll enjoy the Go Millen Stars dye as well. I've been joined here in the studio by my teaching assistant, Miss Emily, who's kept us all on track. And Justin's jumped into the producer's chair. Brock's over here making sure I don't get lost. And Greg's joined us on the camera. So we've also got all of the great moderators offsite helping answer your questions. Thanks so much for joining us. And don't forget, at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Goodbye.